We can't move on to the next classic cake until we master the vegan pate choux paste, also known as eclairs and cream puffs. The vegan pate choux is one that uh, is a bit of a, uh, a mystery and has caused lots of frustration in the vegan baking world over the years. Now, I actually did master this back in 2018. I developed a recipe that worked so unbelievably beautifully. I worked on it for months and it came out perfect only to fail a month later when Follow Your Heart Vegan Egg changed its formula. So I've more recently in all of my recipes gone back to the more natural um, one ingredient recipe where I developed my own egg replacers, which is what I did here. I went back to the drawing board after four years of frustration and disappointment. I didn't even want to look at the vegan eclair recipe anymore after that major disappointment. But I decided to come back to it because there's been so many claiming to be the best vegan eclair out there recipes and I've tried several of them and uh, just no. So I have some criteria, I have some standards when it comes to veganizing recipes. If it is not an 85% match to the original non-vegan recipe, then I just can't do it, I can't share it. If I don't have my friends, my non-vegan friends and family saying, there's absolutely no way that's vegan, then I go back to the drawing board. So I will say that my new updated 2022 version of the vegan pate choux recipe is an 85% match. Now, the reason why it's not a 100% match is because they sort of deflate um, when they come out of the oven. So while they do have a, the beautiful, hollow, uh, crispy outer shell, um, the inside of this is that hollow inside that we're going for. And it even has that authentic eggy, in quotations, matrix. And so that's the only reason that it's, a, the taste is amazing. They fill beautifully with custard. The, it's just absolutely perfect, but I'm giving it an 85% because they do deflate. Um, and that's because when we're trying to replicate an egg, um, there's a lot of things that have to be considered and some of it unfortunately can't be 100% replicated. And that would be the structure of a egg protein during baking. We haven't really been able to pull that off in a vegan form, unfortunately. So all of that backstory and talking, I'm going to get to showing you how easy it is to actually make this with ingredients that you may have to buy. For example, I have recreated the vegan egg product from Follow Your Heart with some basic standard pantry items that you may or may not have. Um, chickpea flour is my main uh, replicant, my main substitute that I decided to use in place of the original Follow Your Heart vegan egg product. Chickpea flour is a super duper binding flour that gives really good strength and structure in a recipe. I also have added some methyl cellulose, which is, you know, maybe something that you guys are poo-pooing and you wouldn't want to buy. And I'll be honest, I did make it both ways. I left it out because I understand not everybody wants to buy these ingredients. So I did do a test two ways. And let me show you, I've already cut one open. This was the example of the one where I left out the methyl cellulose and the xanthan gum. Because I know some of you probably wouldn't want to buy maybe all of those. Um, products. So this one came out more like bread to me, which to me is not acceptable. And it had a very um, thick, sort of gooey, eggy matrix inside, 
which I wasn't really happy with. Um, you know, it's acceptable, I guess, but not for me. So I'm definitely sticking with the methocellulose, which is also another name for it is methocell. I am not at all sponsored by any of these products. I just have found that the combination of the chickpea flour, the little bit of methocell, and the xanthan gum, which is another binder for structure in baked goods, it really is the sweet spot and I really do recommend that you do pick up those three specialty ingredients if you don't already have them. Now I know already people are going to be asking me, well what can I use instead of that? Um, really I don't have that answer for you because I have created this recipe and like I said worked on this for months and months and then reworked on it and I've perfected it with these ingredients. So please don't ask me what you can use instead of all of those things. Like I said, I did do it both ways. If you leave out the methyl cell and the xanthan gum, you will still get a fairly successful end result. But to me, this is really not an eclair. So uh, I, again, I urge you to just go ahead and splurge for those three specialty ingredients if you can get them. Okay, so all of that talking, what did I do here? This was all-purpose flour, the methyl cell, the xanthan gum, baking powder, and the chickpea flour. So that's sifted and set aside. And the next part of the recipe is going to be the liquid part, which is soy milk. You could use any plant milk that you like if you don't like soy milk. So we're going to get that to a sauce pot. I have some vegan butter here that's going to go in there little bit of sugar and a pinch of salt. That's going to get boiled up on the stove and then the other part of our recipe is going to be some water which I have in here already and an addition of aquafaba. Now you can use canned aquafaba, but I had just boiled up some chickpeas the other day, so I saved the liquid from that recipe, that boiling, and um, that's my homemade aquafaba. Both ways work totally fine. In addition to that, we're going to use about a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar, and that's gonna give it another boost. So all of these ingredients are really like literally scientifically worked out to mimic the egg, to cause this recipe to work, to get that pat -a -choux paste to rise up in the oven, create that hollow matrix inside so that we can stuff it with delicious pastry cream custard. And you guys, really trust me, you are going to love this recipe. So let's get it over to the stove and start making this pat -a -choux paste. So very simply, we're just going to bring this plant milk, vegan butter, spot of salt and some sugar up to a rolling boil, which already happened. <laughs> and then we're going to add in all of this dry ingredients. So you want to make sure that you do have a big enough sauce pot because as you see it does bubble up a little bit especially with that addition of baking powder in there that's probably going to do its first action in the sauce pot so with a wooden spoon just really stir it down you want to absorb all of that flour into the liquid as best as possible and then we're going to transfer this whole mixture to a mixer bowl with the paddle attachment. Now you can also do this with a hand beater, so no worries there. All right, so while it's still hot, immediately after it came off the stove, we're going to just pop this into the mixer bowl, paddle attachment, and start adding in that water, aquafaba, and apple cider mixture. If you've ever made pat with eggs before, you'll see that I'm implementing the exact same mix method as we would if we were adding in the eggs. You cook the dough on the stove and then 
one by one you add in the egg mixture and that's going to cause the dough to sort of break apart. Um, honestly, this looks exactly like the pate -choux dough from my non-vegan days, which I don't often always implement the exact mix methods when we convert to vegan. Um, but for this one, I found that it really did work perfectly. So you'll see after each addition, the dough sort of like breaks apart and then you'll just allow it to mix back together before you do add in the next addition. So we're gonna probably do that about four or five times. And the end result is going to look sort of like some really stiff mashed potatoes. So I've already got my oven preheating to 400 degrees and I do have a convection oven setting on my oven, so I will implement that for a recipe like this one. Most of the time, 98% of the time for all my other recipes, I just use a conventional oven, but because I have the convection setting, which is a forced hot air fan heat, that does help things like this, like puff pastry or pate -choux. It will help it give it a little extra boost. If you don't have the convection oven, that's no problem at all. You can still bake this in a conventional oven. And I do write extra notes about that on my website where you're going to have to go to get this recipe at Gretchen'sVeganBakery.com. So uh, into the pastry bag, this luscious pate -choux will go. And I'm using a silicone mat, but you could use a parchment paper instead. Um, it's really no difference. And we're just going to, I'm going to be piping eclairs and cream puffs because I want both of them. But honestly, this pate -choux dough acts just like what I remember from my non-vegan days. It pipes beautifully. And let me tell you what, I ate like the half, the, almost the half of this recipe yesterday when I did the test, not even filled, <laughs> just with just these plain empty shells. They were so delicious. So um, as you can see, it's really not that difficult to do. You just do need those couple of special ingredients, like I said. Now typically we would brush the tops of these with some water to create additional steam in the oven. I did it both ways. I have to be honest, I did not like the result with the water brushing on top. I think it just kind of made it a little bit too heavy. So I'm leaving that off. Um, some people may use aquafaba, but honestly I don't really find it necessary to do any of those things. Into the 400 degree preheated oven we go for 12 minutes, 12 minutes, and 12 minutes. Straight out of the oven, crispy. Nice, beautiful color. I did make ultra miniature ones though. I think I'd go a little bit bigger next time. You could really adjust the size to your liking, but just listen to that crust. I mean, it's perfect. And check out the hollow inside. I've nailed it, guys. So I'm gonna let these cool. I did say 12, 12, and 12, and you're probably wondering what the heck does that even mean? Um, I have pretty much determined that 12 minutes at 400 degrees uh, then I turn the oven down to 375 for 12 minutes, and then I turn it down to 350 for 12 minutes. Um, and then I do leave it in the oven with the oven shut off for about 10 minutes to let them kind of cool slowly so they don't deflate as severely. Um, but yeah, I've pretty much nailed down this recipe. I don't care what you say, you are not going to find a better vegan eclair on the internet, even though everyone is saying that they've got the best recipe. It's right here. So I'm gonna let these cool all the way. Meanwhile, I've got my custard going on the stove and a small recipe of ganache so that I can finish up these eclairs and cream puffs.
So I've got my custard here. It's um, not completely set, but it is cool enough so that I can start piping it into these shells. Now there's a couple of different ways to do it. For eclairs, um, you know, sometimes people will split the entire eclair shell like this and then just fill the custard like that and then just sort of clam shell it. Whereas other times uh, you'll just sort of like poke a hole in each end and then fill it with a pastry bag. Um, I think I'm gonna do it both ways just to show you the differences. Now, whenever I've made cream puffs, I always put one layer of custard in the bottom and then a second layer of whipped cream. That's just the way I like to serve and eat cream puffs. And you could really just do it with the custard and be done with it. But um, if you've never tried a cream puff with a layer of whipped cream in it, oh, it's so good. Now I'm gonna show you the poke a hole method. So I'm just taking like a skewer or, I mean, even like a paintbrush, the end of a paintbrush would work. I have like this little um, chocolate dipping tool that will work equally fine. And that way I know that there's going to be a hollow uh, space throughout. I like to do both sides just to make sure that it is filled from one side to the other. It's nothing worse than buying an eclair and biting into it and it's half hollow. Now the other way of doing it, which I don't know if it's easier. I'm not sure I like the look of this as much though. And then just close it. So you are going to see a little bit of that um, custard popping out, which really is just preference. So let me go ahead and drill holes in my eclair butts. And then we're going to dip these in ganache. You could also use melted chocolate. It's really your preference. Um, I've always liked ganache because melted chocolate is going to dry hard and you're going to have like this crisp outer shell. Um, and I like the way that the ganache stays soft and a little bit shiny. So again, your preference. I am going to make up a little bit of whipped cream so I can top my custard cream puffs with some whipped cream. And then those are just going to get some powdered sugar. Vegan pate to make eclairs and cream puffs. We've got it three different ways here. Two kinds of eclair methods and custard cream puffs. So in the beginning of this video, I mentioned that we can't move on to the next uh, cake in the classic cakes veganized series until we do master the vegan pate choux. So who knows which cakes we'll be doing next that require 
this powder shoe recipe comment below if you know which cakes we are coming up on next I know Alyssa Jane knows because she bugged me the whole time we were in the bakery to make that one specific cake for her wedding cake so who knows which cake we're going to be doing next so that's it for today guys I really do hope you're going to want to make this recipe as always the written instructions and principal recipe ingredients are listed out on my website at gretchensveganbakery.com and stay tuned for the next one as we roll into more classic cakes veganized with Gretchen's Vegan Bakery. Stay tuned for the Crokenbush and the Saint Honoré.